Welcome back to Bombastic Nature, the thing and thing and thing. I'm Mr. Giant and I'm back with some more vibes for all. Yeah, yes I. And this one was under the suggestion. And I'm thinking it's a, a fellow Caribbean person that suggested this one. And uh, this one is Geography Now, St. Kitts and Nevis. Yes, I. And let me tell you all again, man. Thank you so much for all the suggestions and the comments and uh, the likes. And, you know, just keep them coming and ting, you know what I mean? Because, you know, motivation, motivation. And I love doing this. I'll do it anyway. But, you know, it's always nice to hear from people, you know, that they like when we're doing thing. You understand? So, I ain't going to talk too much. I'm going to get right into this one. Let's YouTube and Sim Simmer. Hey guys, so on this channel, the Caribbean countries usually get the least amount of views and they're kind of pushed off to the side with minimal anticipation because everyone thinks the Caribbean nations are all the same. So you know what? Screw it. I'm going to go to this country. I'm going to get good footage, interview the people, and put them... Before he continue, let me tell you this. People do think that all the Caribbean islands are the same. Because uh, when people first, people first meet me, they say, you're Jamaican? And I'll say, nah, I'm Grenadian. And they go, oh, it's all the same thing. No, it's not. We eat different things or our national dishes are different. Uh, I'll give you an example. A friend of mine was opening up a Caribbean restaurant, right? And he wanted me to work with him. And he said, I'm going to have jerk chicken. And I was like, this was a while back. This was like early, well, mid 90s. And he said, uh, I'm going to have jerk chicken. I was like, what's jerk chicken? You know what I mean? I didn't know what it was at the time, you know. And uh, <laughs> he said, "Where are you? You from the? You from the? Don't that way. You don't know what jerk chicken is." So I said, "Which island is it from?" And he said, "Jamaica." I said, "I'm not Jamaican, dude. I'm not." You asked me about oil dung and thing, you know what I mean? Which is going in your national dish. Hey, I know what it is. I know what the Trinidad national dish is because Trinidad is right next to Grenada. Half my family on my dad's side live in Trinidad. So, you know, I know about Trinidad. I know about St. Lucia, St. Vincent, Dominica. You know, uh, what's the other one? St. Vincent, St. Lucia, Dominica. Yeah, and Grenada. That's the Windward Islands. We all use the same currency. I know about those islands. You know what I mean? Uh, I know a lot about Jamaica, the politics and the culture. I wasn't really aware of the food. Like, they eat ackee. I've never had ackee in my life. Not once. So, you know, there is differences, especially since different countries colonize there. Now, granted, Jamaica is a British colony. But let me tell you this. Jamaicans, Jamaicans, I can't understand them. They speak a different type of English. Now, a lot of the islands speak English, but it's a different rhythm and they have different words that they use. Slang words and stuff like that. They have to be, think about it. The island's out in the middle of the ocean. It's not like I could walk to Trinidad or I could like hop a car and go to Barbados. So it's not like we, you know what I mean? We have our own indigenous cultures that we have. Jamaica has got uh, uh, is a, the, the, the place of reggae. Trinidad is a place of calypso and steel drum music. You know, granted, we listen to reggae and stuff on, on in Grenada. We have steel drums in Grenada. We're one of the smaller islands, so we sort of adopt things from the bigger islands. You know what I mean? And things just like here in America, you know, people here adopt stuff from New York and, and you know, things like that. But let's keep going here. Them in the spotlight. We are covering the Caribbean triplets, the Saints. And today we cover the smallest nation in the Americas, St. Kitts and Nevis. What makes this country different from all the others? Well, for one, they have drunken monkeys that fight each other. But you gotta watch this episode to find out. Let's go! It's time to learn geography now! St. Kitts and Nevis. I had the honor of meeting you guys, the geography peeps from this area. You helped me with this video. And by the way, if you go there, hit up my girl Lynette. She's got an awesome company. Welcome to St. Kitts. What do, you, what do we got here? You have this taxi service. She has her own business. That's her on the card. This is a country that everyone should know about, but the locals kind of don't want you to know about them yet. It likes keeping a low profile for now. Grenada too. Because, well, it's kind of like... Whoa, it's a little cheaper than the other islands here and way less crowded. Whoa, people live in converted windmills here? That's pretty cool. Wait, Beyonce and Mick Jagger were here last week? Why were they here? Oh, look at the cute little train! Oh my God. Give it to me! No, I'm on it! Give it! Give it! Yeah, 
yeah, St. Kitts has a lot of secrets that they don't want too many people to know about. And I'm about to expose some of them. Sorry. Bring it on, Bart! It's time to learn geography now! Now, if you come to this country, you'll notice that everything in St. Kitts and Nevis is kind of improvised and capitalized off of. I mean, even the name of the country is kind of like a choppy English bastardization of Spanish words. It literally was like... Okay, so what should we name this country? Well, Christopher Columbus first named him San Cristobal and Nuestra Señora de las Nieves, but you know, we're British, so forget the whole Spanish thing. So what do we name them? Saint Christopher Chris Chris Kit Kiss Kit Kit Kits. Saint Kitts. And uh for the other one, uh Nieves Nieve Nieve Nevis. Nevis, there we go. Saint Kitts and Nevis. Weird way to get there then, but it's official. Yeah, that's kind of how they got their name. Anyway, first of all, St. Kitts and Nevis is located in the Caribbean, and more specifically in the region known as the Lesser Antilles, which is basically all the small islands of the archipelago past Puerto Rico. It is also located in the sub-region of the Leeward Islands, which is basically all the small islands north of Dominica. Their closest neighbor being the Dutch overseas... I'm from, from the Windward Islands. Stasis, ...or Stasia, only about 15 miles or 25 kilometers northwest, and only about 101 square miles in total land area. It is the smallest sovereign state in the Americas and the Western Hemisphere. The country is a dual federation made of St. Kitts, the larger of the two islands, shaped like a drumstick, which has its own prime minister, and Nevis, only about two miles away, which has its own premier. The country is divided further into 14 parishes, nine on St. Kitts and five on Nevis, with the capital and largest town with about 16,000 people, Basterre, located in the southern pocket of St. Kitts. Otherwise, Kayan, a bit north, is the second largest town with only about 3,000 people. The country has one main international airport, Robert L. Bradshaw International, just above Basterre, and Nevis Island has the second, Vance W. Amherst. International, which operates mostly private and seasonal charter flights from nearby islands. Each island has its own ring road that essentially traces the entire perimeter of the coast. Same thing as Grenada. In Kitts, they actually have this long, narrow stretch known as the peninsula that extends into a bowl-shaped landmass at the end. At less than 10 kilometers long and only a fifth of a mile wide, or a third of a kilometer, this narrow part with a road passing is disputably the world's smallest and narrowest isthmus. At the top of Timothy Hill, you get the best view where the Atlantic and Caribbean Sea meet. Don't swim on the Atlantic side though the riptide is way too strong and it will probably kill you anyway in addition st kitts also has a railway yeah a long time ago it was used for sugarcane transportation but now it's used for tourism three hour long guided ride starts in connery village close to the airport with fun stops along the way and ends in sandy point about 18 miles away fun fact the country just got their first street lights in 2018 with a whopping three in basterre in addition the country same thing in grenada interesting sounding town names like hard times brick kiln canada monkey hill gingerland did somebody say Gingerland? The only major islet the country owns is Booby Island, which has booby birds. And as the locals will clearly point out, kind of looks like a boob. And then there's, I kid you not, ahem, sh Bay. Fun fact, despite their small size, St. Kitts can handle a lot of sea vessel transport. Regular cargo ships and ferries between St. Kitts and Nevis dock between Bastyr Port, and Port Zante is in charge of berthing all the large cruise ships. In fact, they can host up to three Oasis-class cruise ships at once, making them the smallest country in the world capable of this massive feat of engineering. In any case, some of the top notable spots to check out in case if you decide to visit include Romney Manor, Rum Distillery, and the Petroglyphs, the St. Kitts Chocolate Factory, the Net... We have a... We have a... a a uh, place called the sugarcane factory and it's an old place you know and they have the donkey war running around when i was there they still use that and uh to, to, to grind the sugarcane up and thing like that you know i mean when you all visit visit them islands man they're very interesting you know what i mean and and, and watch the, these things about them you, you get interested trust me National Museum, the Caravelle Batik Works, Independence Square, the Berkeley Memorial, St. George's Anglican Church, the Eco Park, the Botanical We have a St. George's Park, Anglican Alexander Church. Hamilton's birthplace, the tomb of Sir Thomas Warner, Bloody River, Connell Church, and the top most famous notable site probably being Brimstone Hill Fortress, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. In addition, though, there are tons of natural sites as well, like the Black Rocks on the north side. Nevis has these cool hot springs, but we'll discuss all that later in... <laughs> Kalinago natives of this country called the island of St. Kitts La Amiga, which means fertile land, and Nevis was called Uwali, or the land of clear water. Anyway, getting ahead of ourselves. The country is located on the Caribbean plate in the sub-region known as the Antillean Arc, which converges into the North American plate. This is why multiple islands in this part of the Caribbean are still actively volcanic or have geothermal activity, St. Kitts and Nevis being one of them. Essentially, both islands are tropical, and the entire length of St. Kitts has a mountain spine, with the highest peak being Mount La Amiga, a dormant volcano on the north 
northwest side. Hidden at the top, it has a small geothermally heated crater lake at the summit. Nevis Island, on the other hand, has Nevis Peak, which is almost always covered in clouds year-round, which is where it's got its name, the Spanish word Nieves, or snow, alluding to the white on top. Out of both islands, Nevis is the more geothermally active one, with hot springs near Charlestown. Many small creeks and two major rivers flow out of these mountain chains, including the two longest and only permanent rivers, the Kayon and Wingfield Rivers. The country has many small ponds, but the greatest inland body of water is the Great Salt Pond at the tip of the Southeast Peninsula. Otherwise, generally, the west part of the country is more lush and wet as they get around 60... We used to have a salt pond on the tip of our islands, too, on the southern tip of the island, but uh, the... Uh... They filled it up and put down the Morris Bishop International Airport there. And uh, I was there for, through the whole building of that, man. I, I kind of miss the salt pond, I really do. The inches of rain a year, whereas the further east you go on St. Kitts, it is a little more dry with only about 16 inches of rain annually. And you see some cacti plants along the peninsula. Otherwise, the Narrows is the space of water dividing the two islands, which has the choppiest waves. The reason being because if you zoom out, this is essentially the point where the warm Gulf Stream converges into the colder Atlantic jet stream, meaning that most of the waves on the north side of the island are bigger and crazier, whereas the South Caribbean side is more tame and docile. Yeah, my favorite place is Shipwreck Beach. It's like the calmest place ever with a great view of Nevis in the background. Go to Shipwreck. I, I, love, I love that place. And speaking of calm, it's time for my triple shot of espresso break, which means Noah comes in for the rest of the segment. <laughs> I think you need to clean that mug out. Just saying. Uh, yeah, well, either way, you can get a jug for now mug at jugfornow.com. St. Kitts and Nevis is a tropical island nation in a warm climate that has an abundance of rain. In fact, almost daily you will get short five-ish minute spurts of rain from large cumulus clouds that hover in clusters all over different parts of the island. It's like, eh, how's it going over there in Nevis? A little wet, I see. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, you tell me. How's it going over there in Sandy Point? For much of its early history, St. Kitts and Nevis was a major... Love sugar cane, man. In fact, the nickname of St. Kitts is Sugar City, and for Nevis, Queen City, as at one point they were the richest British crown colonies. Since the 70s, however, the sugar industry has faded, and even though about 40% of the land is devoted to crops, the agriculture industry only makes about 11% of exports. You can still see remnants of the former sugar industry with converted mills, now serving as restaurants, hotels, and homes, and massive copper bowls used for molasses production. See those on Ingram? Too. This means that most major food and branded products are imported. However, most families also have home gardens and fruit trees. Today, the service sector employs a majority in the of the backyard. And over 70% mostly in high end tourism, especially from sea bound cruise ships. Also, fun fact the lignum vitae tree, known as the ironwood, is grown here. It is an endemic tree species with wood that is so dense and strong, it is one of the few types that actually sinks. Water. And speaking of nature, St. Kitts has quite a unique structure when it comes to animal species. And to discuss that, here's our favorite animal correspondent, Caleb. Oh, wait a second. You're not Caleb. Yeah, uh, uh, Caleb's filming a documentary. He's busy today. This is the best we got. Jason, take it away. When visiting St. Kitts and Nevis... <clears throat> no, no, I'm not going to do the accent. Sorry. You'll notice a lot of goats, sheep, and donkey wandering around. Nonetheless, the country has... Don't see that on Grenada. ...hundred species found. Like the Antillian crested hummingbird, the yellow warbler, the green heron, the national animal, the brown pelican. And of course, the country has beautiful reefs containing marine species, ranging from spinner dolphins, hawksbill turtles, angelfish, spiny lobster, and the most endemic species, the flamingo-tongued cowrie. The most famous animal, though, is probably the vervet monkey. Brought over by the French in the 17th century, they multiplied there, and there are now more monkeys than people on the island. Fun fact, the monkeys are famous for getting drunk and stumbling after stealing drinks from the tourists. Often, they even fight each other and pass out after having one too many. Those monkeys will never steal my drink by mugetjockeryman.com. Back to you, Noah. Thank you. And speaking of things that are consumed, food. Some of the top mobile dishes. Rice and peas with chicken and vegetable. <laughs> Spicy plantains, mm. seasoned breadfruit, coconut dumplings, guava cheese, conch fritters, gooseberry jam, guava cheese, cheese coconut fudge. <sighs> That's a lot of things that we have on the island on Grenada too. In the national dish, stewed salt fish, which is actually usually only sold in public on the weekends or special occasions. Fortunately, the people here have lots of special occasions, which will be explained in... Thank you, Noah. You're welcome. Uh, get a mug at geography.com. So first off, the people here are called Kittitians and Nevisions, like Ni... 
Vision. But if you're my buddy from here, full disclosure, I'm just going to call you a kitty. Anywho, now we've already explained how the islands of the Caribbean have their only unique trait that sets them apart from the others. So what is St. Kitts? Well, for one, St. Kitts is often referred to as the mother colony, as it was the first place to be colonized <laughs> by the British and the French. They advertise in Grenada. country, yet it kind of starts everything and takes the biggest risks. They're kind of brave. They know that they're small, but they have nothing to lose. So it's like, hey, let's build massive ocean liner ports and luxury villas to compete with the countries in 10 times our size. Anyway. Here's the demographics graph. The country is made up of about 54,000 people, about three quarters of whom yeah, That's half Grenada. The remaining quarter live on Nevis. The country is predominantly Afro-Caribbean at about 92% of the population. Another 2.2 is mixed biracially, mostly between blacks and whites. About 2.2 are European whites, mostly from the UK. And about 1% are East Indians. And the rest are other people groups, mostly Asians and Middle Easterners. Same kind of mix UK, up. Less than 20 people that are actually descended from native Amerindians live in the country. They use the East Caribbean dollar as their currency. However, they do accept U.S. dollars, but just keep in mind they will most likely... Yeah, the Grenadians is called East Caribbean East currency. A and B blood ballots, and they drive on the left side of the road, as they were once a British colony. English is the official language, and they speak with a soft Caribbean accent. No thick patois like Jamaican. Here's an example. Thank you to the little dot on the world map, but we are a fabulous place to visit. So whenever you're ready, come on down to St. Kitts and have a nice vacation here with us. So it makes you really proud efficient. We're small, but we're large. Now you have to understand, even though this is one country, there still is a slight difference between what it means to be Kittitian and Nevision. Here's some of you guys explaining. Kittitians tend to be pushing more towards, um, you know, things towards the future, while Nevisions are more focusing, you know, like with the preservation of their history and their past. Nevision people, more laid back people. Nevisions have lots of pride. They don't appreciate, like, if you try to shorten the name of the country and you say St. Kitts alone, they don't appreciate it at all. Explain how you feel when you say you are in vision. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I really do. Um, I've actually been called, um, I'm, a, I'm a, a black lady in a white skin. <laughs> and it's very quiet and it relaxed. So quiet. Yeah. But if you went over to St. Kitts and you went to the Marriott and places like that, They'd all be very busy. Yeah, long story short, St. Kitts is the hustle bustle island and Nevis is like the chill, let's just take a nap island. One controversial issue the nation deals with though would have to be the Golden Visa or the Citizenship by Investment Program. What exactly is this? Well, it's kind of like this. I'm a small country with a small economy and nobody pays attention to me. How can I make money fast and get attention quickly? Hello there, I'm from fill in the blank with country that has controversial relations with the Western world, or NATO allied countries. I hear you need money. Why, yes. Yes, I do. I'm an individual who has lots of money, and I see you guys have been very diplomatically level-headed and have the 26th most powerful passport in the world, which has access to certain places I do not. Why, yes. Yes, I do have that. But if there is a way you could, like, do some good things for my country and help develop it, and in return I had a policy that made it easy for you to, like, maybe get residency or something? A little more. Citizenship? That's great! Let's start construction on this new hotel you've been working on. All right, construction is moving along. That's good. Here's your passport. Thanks! And, uh, actually, I think I'll stop construction for now. Oh, why? Eh, I'm kind of bored with this, and all I really needed was this passport. Are you for real, dude? You're just gonna abandon this half-finished building? I mean, wow, you see? You can't trust them sure. capitalists on them. <laughs> Otherwise, don't touch it. As a citizen, it's my private property. Oh, you little m yeah, this is probably the biggest controversy, which has led to many residents demanding a reform in real estate policy. Aside from that Oscar-worthy skit we just did, St. Kitts is a nation flourishing in tradition and customs. And with that, here's Random Hannah to explain. It's me, Hannah. I started working out. And, uh, uh, and God, is I nobody here for their Amanda? segment? Fine, I, art, I, take over. Okay. It's important to know that originally the islands were inhabited by native Kalinago people that were found on various yeah, islands. In never the heard of them before. For their warriors and herbal medicinal practices, the Kalinago were found scattered across much of the Caribbean as far as South America. Oh, yeah. Hey, sorry, guys. Uh, so this is my son, Mikael, and uh, my wife, Raina, is a little too shy to come on camera. You want to say hi? No, you're too shy. You're too shy. 
All right, all right. So we should get back to the video, right? <laughs> Much of the architecture follows a colorful neoclassic 19th century colonial style with wooden stone exteriors, usually with wooden window panels to protect from high winds. Most people on the island are Christian with the Anglican branch being the largest denomination with about fifth of the population adhering to it. Cricket is probably the most popular sport in the country. The largest stadium in the country, Warner Park, was deliberately built as a cricket pitch, but can also be converted for soccer or football. In March, they have a cross-channel swim in which people swim the two-mile-wide channel between two islands to raise money for turtle conversation. Conver conversation. Yeah, turtle conversations. Turtles talking, you know, it's very important for the world. Turtle conservation. The country is also famous for its batik cloth, specifically produced at Carabelle Batik at Romney Manor. And speaking of which, St. Kitts and Nevis is well known for their festivals. The two largest probably being the Culturama Festival on Nevis dressed up characters like Moco Jumbies, clowns, and masquerades. And the most popular one Same thing as in Grenada. Home, which is unlike mm. other countries. Actually happens during Christmas, not during Lent. It's the largest celebration and lots of music is played during the two week long event. And speaking of music, that brings us to Mr. Florida Man Key. Yeah. Alright, so you guys, I'm wearing an Opeth shirt, all-time favorite progressive metal bands. Due to fair use laws, please don't sue us because you guys are awesome and I love you and that's my commentary, yeah, woo! Uh, okay. Music is a huge part of the everyday life in St. Kitts and Nevis. The two main genres that dominate almost every single festival and celebration would have to be Calypso and Soka. Calypso is known for its slower pace, steel drums, and social commentary and lyrics. Yeah. Calypso competition. Man, they, 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 they hitting it on the button here. King or queen. Soka, on the other hand, is a little more of tempo. Usually <laughs> you think? Cajon and a bass. Often you will hear Soka being blasted on speakers during parades and parties. Today, so many national and regional festivals exist, and the largest one in the last week. See, he said parades. We call it mass. You know what I mean? Uh, the parades like they have here in this country is you know the fire trucks and the floats and stuff like that. Uh, during carnival, it's uh, there's not really floats, but really elaborate costumes that one man have, and he's jumping to soca or calypso or whatever they're playing at the time and thing, you know. And uh, so yeah. Thank you, I'm Keith, and that is... Thank you, Keith. And with that, it's time for the incredibly condensed history segment. In the quickest way I can summarize, Native Carib and Kalinago settlements, Christopher Columbus spots the islands, about a hundred... I don't know, can you guys hear the rain? Ah, that's a beautiful sound. You know what hearing the rain hit my window pane sounds like? On the islands when they are in, in Grenada, on all the islands, uh, we have galvanized roofs. So when you have those torrential uh, tropical downpours, you could hear the rain hitting the uh, window pane, the, the, the galvanized roofs. <sighs> Man, it's the most beautiful sound on the world in the world. And it's kind of apropos that I'm sitting here watching something about the Caribbean and it's storming outside and I could hear the wind, the, the, the rain hitting the windows. Uh, you guys probably can't hear that, but man, it's like music to my ears. And 30 years later, the British come in and make their first colony. Soon the French follow after. Many natives were killed. Nevis colony established. The French relinquished their claim. They join Anguilla as a British dependency. Self-governing member of the West Indies Associated States. Anguilla splits as a dependency. Stays with the UK. Independence. Nevis almost tries to break away as independent, but it doesn't pass. Government closes the sugar industry officially in 2005. They highly switch things up to tourism. And here we are today. Some top notable people from St. Kitts and Nevis include Kennedy Simmons, Robert Llewellyn Brown, Bradshaw. All these cricket players, yeah. kind of famous sprinters, but the most famous one probably being Kim Collins. He has a highway named after him. Keith Kayamba Gums, Ativa Harris, Livingstone Bramble, John Gorey, Joan Armatraden, Cecily Tyson, Carol Phillips, Mel B's father was from Nevis, Lady Lashure, Corrine Bailey Ray, Cecily Tyson. I didn't know she was from down there. St. Kitts and Nevis has a lot of history intertwined with British and a little bit of French and a lot of Caribbean. Let's see how they make their way around the world stage in. Same thing as Grenada. St. Kitts and Nevis is small. 
dull, yet knows how to stay alive and relevant. They're like the motivator of the Caribbean. It's like, hey, St. Kitts and Nevis is doing what now? <laughs> well, if they can do it, so can we. For one, the UK has kept relatively close ties even after independence. It is very easy for UK residents to move, buy land, live, and eventually file for residency and eventually citizenship to St. Kitts and Nevis. There are also lots of Kittitian migrants in the UK, especially in Liverpool. For the Dominican Republic, many Kittitians went to find work in the early 20s and 30s, especially in the town of San Pedro de Macores. Today, the two countries work closely and have good trade and business, especially for imports. The USA and Canada are, of course, the largest business partners and contributors to the tourism industry. Americans make up a majority of cruise ship passengers, usually departing from Miami or Puerto Rico. There was a little bit of drama with Canada, though, after an incident with an individual that caused problems after entering Canada through the Citizenship by Investment Program, which caused Canada to change their visa policy on petitioned citizens. Still, they are overall cool with each other. In terms of their best friends, though, most Kittitian and Nevisian geographers I have talked to have said, usually one of three options, Antigua and Barbuda, the UK Overseas Territory of Anguilla, and Taiwan. Taiwan donates a lot of money and completed project investments in St. Kitts and Nevis, including the Cricket Stadium, and there's even an entire eco park which has the flags of the two states in front of it to show the friendship. In return, St. Kitts and Nevis recognizes their sovereignty over the People's Republic of China, the Taiwanese military personnel serve deployments in St. Kitts and Nevis regularly, and the two get along pretty well. Antigua and Barbuda and the UK Overseas Territory of Anguilla are usually the closest family, though. All our former British colonies lumped together as the Leeward Islands colony. They are the best rivals in sport and tourism. Lots of interconnecting flights operate between them. Many have families in each other's nations and islands. And if anything happens, these three know they can depend on each other. In conclusion, St. Kitts may be the smallest of the Western Hemisphere, but it has the heart of an Oasis class cruise liner. Massive, accommodating, high-end, and aesthetically pleasing. Stay tuned, the second sister triplet, St. Lucia, is coming up next. Man, now I'm homesick. Now I need to go back home and chill on the beach and stuff. But but seriously speaking, though, man, I, I tell you what. If you're traveling for the first time and you're kind of wary of going to a foreign country or anything like that, and this goes for every and anybody, go to a, one of the Caribbean islands first. Friendly, relatively safe, depending on the island. I ain't going to tell you it's all safe, but depending on the island, you know. Uh, if you want something different, but a place where people speak English and you could understand each other, and want, want it to be a first foray into traveling, that's one of the best places to start. You know what I'm saying? They speak English, they're friendly, they'll feed you. <laughs> you know what I mean? One of my favorite things to do if I meet somebody from a different country while I was on the island is get them to try the, the fruit you know get them to see how they gonna feel with some oil dung or a roti or something you know what i mean just give them something to and even living here you know i could cook some rice and peas and stewed chicken and stuff you know and i'll feed people as i remember living in new york and uh, my ex-wife is from kentucky and uh, we live in an area where it's predominantly people from the West Indies. And uh, in the next house, there was some Vincentians living there. And I remember uh, my ex-wife walking out the door and they said, Hey, we just finished cooking. You want some food? And she looks at me and I was like, yeah, that's so we do. You know what I mean? They'll, take, they'll invite you to the house and stuff and feed you up and things like that. No, I'm not saying to just go there and do that. You have to be wary in any strange or different culture that you go to. So I ain't saying just go and do it, but be friendly, man. You know, which could be a downfall here. <laughs> but anyway, man, thank you all for watching this with me. You understand what I say and take? I'm going to leave a link in the description. Go check out Geography now. They always have some good stuff there. You know what I mean? And I'm going to try to get to the rest of the uh, islands in the Caribbean. I haven't done some of them yet. But in the meantime, you all go out there, meet a stranger, understand the stranger as a human being, take care of each other, alright? Cool runnings.